Hi all. In this video, we are going to learn about Google Cloud Storage bucket or a GCS bucket, and we are going to play around a GCS bucket. So, what's a GCS or a Google Cloud Storage? So, it is an online file or object storage service for storing and accessing data. So, using a Google Cloud Storage, we can store any amount of data and we can access it using a GCP console. Or a GS util. So let's go to Google Cloud Storage Service and we'll see how we can play around it. So open the navigation menu and go to Cloud Storage. So if you are a new to GCP, let's assume a GCS is like a Google Drive where you can create a folders or you can upload your files, photos, and videos. So same way. In GCS, we can store our objects. It can be a video, audio files, or like a files or photos. So we can store any amount, any kind of data in GCS. So here uh, you can see currently I have one bucket created here, demo bkt001. So let's create one more bucket and upload a few object inside the bucket. Click on create bucket so always remember uh, the bucket name should be globally unique so you cannot use any name uh, which is already taken so suppose i'll give the name as a demo so it will throw an error that it is already taken so if i check test it will throw an error so i'll just give the name as a demo hyphen bkt hyphen zero zero Okay, so we can use this bucket. Then I'll click continue. So here we have to select where we can store our data. So either you can store in multi region, in dual region, means across the two regions, or you can use single region. So I am selecting a single region and I'll select the nearest location uh, that is uh, Mumbai for this demo. Okay and rest everything i am keeping as it is so storage class here are four storage classes in gcs so that is standard near line cold line and archive so use of each storage class is based on the purpose of our data storage so for like a normal purpose we can use a standard where the data is accessed very frequently or used for a application we can use a standard so near line is suppose we are accessing data only once in a month or any monthly activity we can use a near line cold line we can use if data is accessed quarterly for any disaster recovery drill or dr activity and the archival is for long term solution so for this demo i am selecting as a standard i'll click on continue rest i am keeping as it is i am not giving any protections for this bucket i am i clicked on create so our bucket is created and we are inside the bucket so let's go to browser here and here we have two bucket bkt001 which is already created and this is 002 we created just now so let's upload one sample file to bucket so it's like as simple as you are uploading a photos to your instagram or facebook so i'm uploading files here so i'll upload one sample XML file in this bucket. Okay, file is uploaded, and you can see the file having 238 bytes of size, the XML format, and storage class as a standard. Okay, and version is currently no. Retention expiry date currently none. Okay, so we have one sample file here. Now we have a bucket demo bucket 002 and we have one sample file sample XML. Now we are going to see how we can apply some protection on our bucket or our object. So just go to protections and here there are two options one is object versioning and one is a retention policy. Suppose we are using this bucket for a production purpose and we have 
two scenarios like suppose one scenario we are storing some configuration files in that bucket where we want to allow modification in the objects or like in a bucket files but we don't want it to delete permanently and we have another case where we are storing only the contractual documents which are not going to change for a year and we don't want them to be deleted so for both the purpose we can have this option so first we will see object versioning and how object versioning will work so currently the object versioning is off okay so let's delete this file now i will delete and we'll see if we can recover it okay the file is deleted let's go to deleted data oh nothing here okay so it means we deleted the file it got deleted permanently because there is no protection or object versioning enabled for this bucket now let me enable object versioning so i'll click on object versioning i'll click confirm so here object versioning is on now let's upload same file again and we'll try to delete that and see what will happen so i'll upload the same file again sample file okay so we'll see deleted data so nothing in the deleted data okay now i'll click and and i'll delete it So file is deleted and now we want to see if we can restore that file or get back that file which is deleted. It might be deleted mistakenly or we want to restore the previous version. So just go to deleted data now. So here you could see sample.xml deleted and having one version. So let's go to this. So currently there are no live objects so it's blank here all the objects are deleted and version history so it will show the one non-current object okay so i'll restore that so i'll confirm okay now here there are two objects one is a live object which is available in the bucket and one is deleted like non-current version so go to bucket now and see if we got our file back yes we have our file back let's check what's inside the file so i'll open my file okay so this is the file and here i have just given the document name and this is my original file now let me modify this file and i want to upload again with the same name so let me do that so i'll just edit the file as this is my updated file and i'll upload again with the same name okay it will give me the warning i'll select the overwrite because it is having the same name okay now the file is uploaded so i just uploaded the same means like a file with the same name again and it got overwritten now suppose i want to use a previously or like previous version of my file so here you could see there are two non current versions so let me open these files which is the current live version and let me see this is my updated file okay so let's like suppose this is a configuration file and we are used for any deployment or any production activity and now we want to roll back everything and we want a previous files back so how we can do that just go to non current version okay so here you could see the first version was having say 238 byte and the current is having 237 okay and this is a live object so let me restore a previous file 
so I restored previous file now what happened this becomes a live version 238 becomes live version and the newly updated file is also not deleted it just added as a non-current version here okay means like there are three versions of the file now let's go to bucket and we'll see if file got restored so let me open the file let's see it will show it's my original file This is my original file so we got our original file back so in this way we can use object or object versioning where we can allow modification of the file but we can always store a original data or a maintain a versioning for the data so that's it for object versioning now we are going to see about a protection or like a retention policy so we can protect our data using a retention policy as well but always remember we cannot use object versioning and retention policy both at the same time here currently the object versioning is on so it's not giving me option to set a retention policy and it's giving me the message that object versioning and retention policies cannot be on at the same time so i'll just disable object versioning and I'll set a retention policy okay so to set so I'll set a retention policy means here we can give like suppose I have some contractual document which I want to store for one year and that's not going to change for a complete year and I don't want any modification in that document so I will keep a retention policy for one year and we cannot delete that file for a one year so for this demo i am just giving the duration as like suppose 10 seconds or like suppose a 15 seconds only and we'll see how it works so i clicked on save and we save the retention policy as a 15. now let me upload one more file so we'll upload a demo txt file demo txt file here okay so file uploaded and let me try to delete it immediately within the 10 second so i am trying to delete that and it gave me the error so let's see what is the error so the retention policy not met and what is the error object demo txt is subject to bucket retention policy and cannot be deleted or written or archived until what is the time three ten zero seven okay so let's go to browser again go to our bucket again now we'll try to delete again we assume like 10 seconds have crossed now and i'll try to delete that file okay so file got deleted now so in this way we can set a retention period so here we can set the retention period so in this way we can set a retention period for a required amount of time for this video only i set it as a 15 second but as per our purpose or requirement we can set a retention period whatever we want so let's go back to the browser and i'll show you so this demo bucket 001 i have created previously and i have set a retention period for two days okay now suppose i want to delete demo txt from this bucket I won't able to delete that okay cannot be deleted and it gives me the same error that retention policy 
not made now i'll go to bucket 002 again and here you could see unlocked means like retention policy is unlocked it means we can delete or reduce the duration for retention policy so i'll go i'll for 15 seconds i'll reduce it to 5 seconds and i can save and i can delete also this retention policy so here i can have option to delete a retention policy okay i didn't lock it yet so let me check in this another bucket here i kept the retention policy for two days and here i lock the retention policy so if i go to retention policy it is locked i cannot delete retention policy and second things i cannot reduce the retention period means suppose from two days i can make it to five days there is no issue but if i want to make it as a one day a locked retention policy can't be removed or reduced in duration means if it is locked you can't do anything until that retention period okay so suppose now i want to delete both this bucket so it will give me error for bucket 001 because retention period is two days and it's locked So deleting to bucket one of two buckets could not be deleted let's see here you can see the message bucket 002 success object deleted for bucket 001 failed because it's cannot be deleted due to a retention policy so in this way you can provide protection to your cloud storage bucket now now let's see what is a life cycle rules so we have one bucket demo bucket 001 and we are storing suppose we are storing some log files in that bucket and the application is generating huge amount of logs and we want these logs to be deleted or moved to archival after seven days so we don't want to do it manually so we can set a life cycle or rule so how we can rule we can add a rule so i already added a rule here i'll just delete that and add again so add a rule set storage class to near end i want to there are four options set class to cold line archive or delete I want to delete so when I want to delete so I am selecting the condition as a age when it crossed seven days of age so if object completed a seven days in this bucket it will be automatically deleted so I will click on create so always remember it will take 24 hours to take place this rules in effect so while creating you could see after you have added or edited a rule it may take up to 24 hours so for now it's not going to delete anything but we can set the life cycle rule this way now I am deleting all the rule so that's it for this video thank you for watching the video